Hello everyone and welcome to Internetworking Experts and this is day one of the CCNA routing and switching class, a, a nine day class in which hopefully you're going to learn a ton of things. So let's go ahead and go forward here with some of the introductory slides just to make sure I, I stay on track. So in this next upcoming section I'm going to give sort of an introduction to the course, give a class overview of, of what you can expect over these next nine days or so. Go through the class agenda and then of course we're going to get into the main content of it. Okay, so that being the case, uh, let me start by sort of introducing myself to you so you know who I am and um, who this guy is who's teaching you CCNA stuff. So my name is Keith Bogart. Uh, you can see my credentials there on the slide and I've been teaching CCNA classes for what seems like a gazillion years. I, I love teaching CCNA and the topics contained in it. And I'm also providing you there my email address. So if at any point in time you have a question, for example, uh, if you submitted a question during these days that was not answered, maybe because we just had too many questions, uh, maybe it was outside the scope of the CCNA. But for whatever reason, if I wasn't able to get back to you, feel free to use my email address there and email me whatever questions that you have. Also, you know, once the class is done, if you have any questions while you're doing your studying and, and there's a particular protocol or something you don't understand, feel free to shoot me an email and, and I'll do my best to get back to you with as detailed of a response as I can. So, this is going down a little bit more deeply here into what we're going to cover over the nine days, uh, but we're going to go into a lot more detail than what you see here. Now, some of you might be wondering, where is the, the daily breakdown going to be? And unfortunately, I can't provide that to you because I don't know how many questions you're going to ask me, so I don't know how long that's going to take. I might come up with ideas for demonstrations and examples off the top of my head, and that will change the time. So it's sort of a, a flowing, free-flowing class. I'm not exactly sure what topics we're going to cover every day or, or where we're going to end. But I will tell you this. I do recognize that, that many of you watching out there have already been studying for your CCNA. You might already be well versed on some of the topics that we're covering. And you know, you're always free if at any point in time, if I go into a topic, for example, IP addressing, and you say, oh man, I already know IP addressing, I don't really need to watch this. All right, take a coffee break, go grab lunch, you know, go play with your dog, and, and come back and just check the video every once in a while to see when I'm done with it. Okay, so you don't have to be stuck here if you're watching something that you already know. Now, questions and answers. Let me talk a little bit about this. So this whole series of nine days is being recorded and it's going to be polished and edited so that you can actually watch it at your leisure for anything that you missed or if you want to watch something over again to brush up on it. But because of that, I don't have the luxury of taking your questions and answering them right on the spot as you submit your question. You know, that would make the editing process of the recording rather difficult. So what I'm going to do is I encourage you to submit your questions at any time. So on the, on the chat there, go ahead and put in your question whenever you want. But I'm going to go through certain sections of lecture. You know, we're going to do anywhere from, oh, 45 minutes to an hour of lecture. And then I'll break the lecture. And then I'll go into the chat and take a look, your, look at your questions and answer your questions at that time. Now the other thing about your questions, I don't know at any given time how many of you are watching this. There could be 50, there could be 5,000, I have no idea. So there's a very good possibility that when I get to the questions, I might see far too many questions for me to answer in that setting. So if that does happen, I'm going to have to be selective about what questions I answer. And I'll try to make sure that I answer the questions that really pertain to the CCNA routing and switching certification. So if you ask a question that maybe goes outside of the scope of the CCNA, something that's a really good question, but maybe it's a little bit more technical than someone who's studying for their CCNA would need to know, I might not get to your question. So just be aware of that, and if that is the case, like I said, you've got my email address, kbogart at ine.com. Always feel free to copy your question and shoot it to me via email, and then I'll get to it offline like that. Okay, 
Now, before we start, there is one thing I want to encourage you. If you don't already have this in front of you, please get some paper and a pen in front of you. And here's why. Once I start doing some demonstrations on some real switches and routers, it's very helpful for you if you can draw a topology diagram, and I'll, I'll draw it for you. So on the screen here, I'll start by showing you a topology diagram of what I'm getting into. But then I'm going to leave that diagram and actually bring up the screen that has the command line interface. So if I'm talking to you and I'm saying, okay, well right now, I'm in router one, and router one, we're going to send switch three this, and then switch three is going to send it on to router six. Well, if you don't have a picture in front of you, it's very easy to get lost and, and say to yourself, I don't know which device he's on and what device is talking to what device. So I would encourage you, get that pen or pencil, get that paper in front of you, so that when I actually do put a diagram up here on the screen, you can copy it down really fast, and then when I leave it, you've got it in front of you, and you can follow along with me as to what I'm doing. So with that, let's go into a basic introduction now of networking. So let's start with, you know, what is a computer network? Some of you already know this, some of you might not if you haven't done any studying yet. So, you know, back in the really early days of computers when computers were like the size of the wall behind me, there was no such thing as networking, right? You, you had, you as a computer scientist would sit in front of a dumb terminal which would have some big massive thick cables connecting back to that computer and it was just you and that computer. And that computer might have some other terminals sitting around it, but really that computer didn't have any way of, of talking or communicating with any other computers. So a computer network is basically just some underlying software and hardware that allows computing devices, whether it be laptops or smartphones or tablets, to send data back and forth to each other. Now here's an analogy I can draw. Think of your network of friends, okay? Hopefully if you're watching this, you have at least one friend. If, if not, well, I'll be your friend. Um, but if you have a network of friends, you know, what, is, what do we mean by a network of friends? Well, in order to have a network of friends, number one, you have to have some way of communicating. In other words, if you're all in a room, you've got the air, right? The air carries your sound waves back and forth from your mouth to the person's ear. So the air is, is the medium carrying that. Or maybe you're using Facebook or something, uh, an electronic way of communicating. Or maybe you're using the phone. But you've got to have some, some physical thing that's carrying what's in your brain or out of your mouth to that other person. Same thing with a computer network. In order to have a computer network, we have to have some physical things connecting these devices to each other. Now, back to your network of friends. In order to have a, a network of friends, you have to have some rules and protocols in place. For example, you know, I can talk to Sally as long as Sally's not at the same time talking to Bob, right? Those are the rules in place. Or the, another rule might be, I can talk to Sally as long as I don't talk to her about Bob. Because it's not really polite for me to gossip about my other friends to other friends. So those are some of the rules in place. Same thing is true with a computer network. Once you've got the, the physical infrastructure in place, the cables and everything that connects the computers together, we have to have some software to determine what these rules are. When does my computer know when it's okay for him to communicate and when he should just be listening? And when he's listening, when he hears something, how does he know it's for him as opposed to somebody else? So these are all also built into the rules of computer networks. 